Welcome back to another Aki Analysis and Tips for Animators and today I'm going to talk about the movie The Darkest Hour. There are five sequences that I want to talk about, including how characters are in the sets, with gestures, hidden gestures, and status symbols, and all of those things that I talk about in my acting analysis clips. And just in case you don't know what I'm talking about, hi, my name is JD, and on my channel, I do acting analysis clips like these. I do animation analysis clips, I do rig reviews, I do proc reviews, animation news, lectures, all kinds of things. Feel free to browse around, and if there's something that you like, feel free to subscribe. Why not? And let's go to those sequences. First up, we have this here, and I'm gonna screw up through this. You can see all the crazy commotion. That is the sequence, and why am I showing you this? It's because of how you want to lead the audience somewhere. So you have a lot of movement, right, into the frame. There are people shouting, yelling, and gesturing. There's paper waving around and shaking his head. And even has a point here, let's go over there, and then tells the camera to go over there. Now, why am I showing you this? Because of this. As we go, and we have so much to to look at it's all kind of the same color maybe it's a bit of a highlight here but you don't quite know where to look and then ta -ta, this character is not moving at all so there's contrast so when you have something where a lot of people are moving well how do you have a focus there well nothing is moving there so now because all of these people are moving and you can see later on you know their heads are turning here and they're yelling and all that stuff they go and especially here they go <laughs> everybody's gesturing and shouting. I mean, of course, it's very clear that I want to look at him. He's massively huge on screen. But again, you can see all of that and he is not moving. And I love that little, just that little look here and you go, hmm, all right, well, what does this guy over there think? So if you have multiple characters and you want to make sure that the audience knows where to look, especially since they are dressed the same, they kind of look the same, well, then you can do a lot of movement and not a lot of movement. Lighting-wise, it's not a huge difference. So again, it's not like there's a spotlight on this character, but look in terms of contrast of how people are moving. Now, as he looks up, there's another variation of this. Again, this character is the one we want to look at. So what happens here is that even though this character is nicely here in the thirds in my crappily <laughs> drawn thirds, this character is more in the middle, not super center, but still centered. Now, how do we know that we need to look at him? Again, it's not lighting wise a huge thing, and this character is covered by a huge set piece because this character is more of a hidden character, maybe kind of a secret thing. So what you can do here is have your set piece obstruct the eyes. Because as humans, we want to go to eyes. You want to look at things. Now you might say this character has clear eyes, is in the shadow, but generally, this post is hiding this character. This piece is hiding this character, and this character is fairly centered. So it really gives us a, a helpful guide as to where to look. At this point, no eyes, this character is looking down. So it's really, this is the character we need to look at. And when you go back, when it switches to the other scene, you can see again, lots of movement, lots of movement, fairly centered, and this character is not moving at all. So again, look at contrast to draw attention to itself, and sometimes less is more. So in this sequence, they are meeting here for the first time, and you have that classic gesture here, oh, you gotta come here, come here, and kiss my hand. Why am I showing you this? It's because of what he is doing right after. It's this. It's not extremely subtle. I'm sure he noticed this. And as an audience, we can see it's also nicely lit, because you got the highlight here, so you can really see the color contrast when all of this happens. It's nicely staged there. And as always, I'm showing you this not that you copy this, but in terms of, of a, a springboard of ideas. So let's pretend your character is out really saying no, and even in a lip sync maybe, I like this. Maybe the character is at a birthday party, like I love kids, but the character is a neat freak and doesn't want to be touched or anything. And the kids are messy, it's the young kids, love me, a kindergarten party, whatever. And they say, no, I love, I love kids. And then as the kids hold him and touch him, like, yeah, you're fine, you're fine. And then the character does this and wipes his hand. So think about where you have the character portraying one thing and through a gesture, you actually realize, oh, the character actually thinks this. And that's the truth that comes out of the character through that gesture. Because gestures usually are overdone. You got the W pose, you got this. It's always kind of the same ones. And I always recommend to my students, at least in your first couple takes when you act things out and film yourself a reference, put your hands behind your back. Then you can see how you act with your shoulders or your chest or your head. Because arms are just kind of overused. But if you do want to use them, I would recommend use them with a purpose. It will reveal character by doing this. And there's another example afterwards, again, that reveals, that reveals something about a character through the gesture. So it doesn't have to be just the random flailing of one arm or two arms. And it's in this one. So they are celebrating here and yay, yay, yay. And you can see he's old. So they're bringing him the glass. They're making sure it's okay, it doesn't fall. So she has that hand almost underneath the glass to make sure it's okay. Then when they're done here, she's holding the hand, she's putting the hand underneath. So all those gestures show, I want to help this character. These are not random gestures. She wants to offer help. This tells us something that she wants to be helpful and because he's old, and again, she tries to help. Well, here's another one. Watch what he's doing. 
and <laughs> let go. So in his case, maybe he's just grumpy, doesn't want to be healthy, doesn't want to look frail, doesn't want to look weak. Just as something where it's a gesture that's not something where it's the classic thing, but it's more like, leave me alone. It's, it's a deliberate gesture that tells us something about the character. And this could be, like I said, someone's grumpy or just let go of me or I need to be seen as someone powerful. So don't help me. So get away because I need to come across as powerful. I don't need help visually, blah, 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 blah. So many ways you can use this for your scene. But if you do add a gesture, think about, is this something that will tell us more about the character and just expand our ideas and our perception of this character, not just random things so that the character just moves. Speaking of movement, I have this one as the next sequence and it's a long one. I can scrub through. This is what's happening here. Again, this is about gesture, but this is not what I'm going to talk about. It's not this. It's actually this. It's the wall. It's where they are. So there are a couple of things here. As he laughs, he holds on to this wall. But there are a couple of things you can do. Let's pretend, like I said before, the character is old. And this character doesn't want to reveal to this character that he needs help. Maybe he needs a cane or whatever. He's kind of weak. So as he walks, you can see how he uses the wall. Now, this is not a moment where it's about weakness. But again, I want to show you this as an idea, as a springboard for ideas. So maybe you can use confined space where a character can use this. Maybe it's a bit more hidden. It's visible to the audience, but it's hidden to this character because of this hand is being blocked by the body. But the character needs help and he's using this. You can do something where, let's say, the characters are talking and this character is a bit more forceful and with a threat. This could be an ellipsing that could say something. And this character is uncomfortable and moves back. And now this wall doesn't let the character go further back to evade this character. And again, this could be in all kinds of situations where maybe, again, it's the, it's the guy or whoever uh, at a Christmas party or at a birthday party and lots of kids and the character doesn't want to deal with kids and moves back and then it's stuck in a corner like, all right, I guess I'll play with you and blah, blah, blah. So again, this can be used in many, many ways, but I like the idea of the confined space. So if you have your characters, think about where you will put them. Is it going to be a big empty space? Maybe that will give the character room to evade another character and that's the whole point. Or it's a small space where it's threatening because there's no escape. Or maybe the character wants to come off as more relaxed and then thankfully there's a wall right there to be like here like this. Maybe the character hears something devastating and they're going oh and they almost faint and then they plop against the wall so they don't fall back right away which gives them the other character time to hold the character so they can show the interaction how much they like each other how much they support and so on and so on. But to me again that's why I love props and sets because that it gives you opportunities to do something different with the character and to reveal something else about the character. And again if that's something that you want to do for later on in a job in a movie, chances are the characters are not going to be in an empty scene. They're going to be in a environment, in a set, in a could be in a jungle, could be in a house, whatever it is. But then think about, well, all of this is around me. How can I use this to tell the story and to tell us something more about the character. And speaking of character in this one, she comes in and sees how he is alone. And you can see this is kind of reflecting his mood at this point. It's all uh He's sad, he doesn't have confidence anymore. And the reason why I'm showing you this is this moment here. So if you have a character that is sitting, I mean, a character could also be standing, could be sitting on the ground. And this kind of goes back to the Invisible Man scene where she was sitting on the ground. He comes over and sits, almost sits down. He's squatting, but lowers himself towards her. And that's the same case here. He needs help. He needs emotional help. So she's not standing here talking down to him where he's old and you can see how hunched over he is, he would have to get up and look up and it's a strain physically. It just wouldn't be helpful. So she can choose to sit next to him, but because of that, he would still have to turn a lot. Again, physically, it's a lot to do. So what she chooses here is to sit down here. It's in front of him and it's lower. So all he has to do is this. That's all in terms of the physical strain and the physical demands. That's all he has to do and it's very helpful. She knows that if I do this, this, that's all he has to do and she can just talk to him. And this goes on and you can see the sequence as they do this and once they're done, I mean, it is his wife. She knows how he is and what he can do and now she has her sassy responses here standing again. So it's cute, I like their relationship there. But again, if you have someone that's, that wants to be empathetic, someone that wants to listen to someone, someone that wants to feel like, I'm listening, I'm here for you, let me talk to you, let me help you, Think about how you position them. Are they high, same level, or lower? Are they next to them or in front of them? And if it is a character that wants to help this character, then you can add something like this here where they're, it's just a bit more gentle. They can do this here for a bit more sensitivity. And I like this too. It's almost like I'm holding you. I'm there. I'm there for support. I can prop you up. You're okay. You're not alone. And then that'll tap, tap for confirmation. It's okay. <laughs> then she leaves him back into this pose here. 
And this can be within a set, this can also be with characters in an empty scene. Again, I've seen many pieces where animation is awesome, the character stuff is awesome, and they're just an empty scene. I'm not saying you have to have a set all the time, but if you do, and they can sit, they can stand, think about well, where again, where do I place them? And this is not like the other one where it's confined, it's an open space, but it's important to know where you put them, like I said, same level, lower in front of them. So as you have multiple characters, this will be different for one character, but if you have multiple characters in your scene, think about that. Think about obviously the context and if there's lip sync, what they're saying, what the story is and what the interaction is, but then use the sets and use their positioning. Are they close? Are they further away? Does that emphasize the moment maybe in the lip sync or in the pantomime if they're further away or closer? Just think about the spatial relationship of the characters and how as an audience, we then get to learn more about their relationship and how they are based on where they sit, where they stand, and how they interact with each other. Speaking of interaction, if you want to interact with me, I guess this works as a segue. I have workshops so I can work with you and I can make your awesome shots even more awesome. So you can sign up, link in the description as always with all the information. My workshops are always open for signups. And if you liked what I was talking about here, feel free to subscribe so you don't miss any of my uploads because I do upload every day except weekends. Other than that, that's it. And if you're still watching, as always, thank you for your patience and thank you for watching until the very end. And that's it from me and I will see you in my next upload.